how to score in your AS Physics Paper 3. So in this video, I am going to give you four top tips enable you to score well in your AS Physics Paper 3, particularly related to question number one. So please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more top tips, for more secrets review in scoring well in your physics. So let us get started. Tip number one, DP vs SF or decimal points vs significant figures. So to think it simpler, think it as raw data vs calculated data. But what is raw data? What is calculated data? So raw, to make you understand the difference between raw data and calculated data, let us look at some examples that I'll be giving you right now. So these are all the measuring apparatus that you can easily obtain in your laboratory. And I believe you know what is this, right? So any data or any readings that you take from the apparatus are called raw data. So that means you read from the apparatus, that reading is called raw data. For raw data, you have to look at the decimal points. So how to determine how many decimal points you should record in your final answer is by looking at the absolute uncertainty of the measuring apparatus. For example, look at this meter rule. What is the absolute uncertainty of the meter rule? If you cannot recall the absolute uncertainty, why not think it even simpler way to think it? Think it as smallest division on the meter rule. What is the smallest division on the meter rule? Everybody knows that. Smallest division on the meter rule is 0 0.1 cm. So you just add plus minus, that will be the absolute uncertainty of the meter rule. As simple as that, right? So you could see that 0 0.1 cm, this is one decimal point. So whenever you take your reading by using the meter rule, make sure that you record your final reading in terms of one decimal point only. Now, 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 what is this? This is called digital stopwatch. I know, I know, many students confused here. So they're saying that the absolute uncertainty of the digital stopwatch is supposed to be 0 0.01 second. I do agree 100%. But, so we are supposed to take our reading when we record our final reading, it has to be two decimal points. I do agree with that. But, hey, we are just normal humans. Think it like a human. Um, you may want to ask yourself, would you be that fast reacted to the stopwatch when you press the stopwatch? You, you press the stopwatch and you press the stopwatch again to stop the stopwatch, right? Due to human's reaction, right? Normal human could not react as fast as 0 0.01 second. So due to that, we have to increase our absolute uncertainty of this digital stopwatch to be 0 0.1 second due to our human's reaction time. So therefore, all the reading recorded by the digital stopwatch could be in one decimal point. The next one, this is very popular one related to electricity. So it is called multi-tester, but it can add as voltmeter as well as ammeter. So look at the symbol here. This is, if you want it to add as voltmeter, you just connect to volt and then you just turn it to volt, whichever scale that you want. Or you want it to add as ammeter, just turn to ammeter. So this is digital voltmeter or digital ammeter. So therefore the absolute uncertainty is 0 0.01 volt or 0 0.01 milliampere or ampere. So, or ampere. So all the readings recorded by using this apparatus must be two decimal points. That's all. So this is one of the example. Let's say, look at the length. This is called raw data because length, we use meter rule to measure the length. So to avoid careless mistake, I usually use pencil to write it as 0 0.1 cm on top of the table and I will erase it again after that. But if you don't want to erase it, you are welcome to include it in your table. 
So plus minus 0 0.1 cm, I put that as the absolute uncertainty of the meter rule. So therefore, I could remind myself all the readings that are being measured by this meter rule must all be recorded in one decimal point. This is what I did. And what about time taken for N oscillations? So the raw data are T1 and T2 only. T average is called calculated data. As long as you use calculator to do your calculation, those are called calculated data. So you look at my readings of T1 and T2. So since my reaction time, everybody has their own reaction time. And the normal reaction time for a normal human is between 0 0.3 second to 0 0.7 second. So due to the human's reaction time, I have to increase the uncertainty, the absolute uncertainty of the, my digital stopwatch. So I increase it to plus minus 0 0.1 second. I write it here to remind myself that all the readings of T1 and T2 must be in terms of one decimal point only. So this is it. Now, period and T average, like the one that I show you here, they are called calculated data because we use our calculator to calculate. How to calculate this T average? T average, I, I'm gonna write it here. T average can be calculated by T1 plus T2 divided by two. This is the average of the two times that I measured. So since I use a calculator, so this is called calculated data. So for all the calculated data, you have to look at the significant figures of their raw data. So I use my calculator 21.4 plus 21 and divided by two, I got 21.2, just nice. But before I record this T average, I know that this has to be a calculated data. So I look at my significant figures of my T1 and T2. T1 has three significant figures and so does T2, three significant figures as well. So therefore my T average will have to be in three significant figures. What about the other uh, T average? Look at your res respective T1 and T2 values. So 27.0, 26.7, they are all three significant figures. So therefore your T average must be in terms of three significant figures. That is how you see how many significant figures that you're supposed to put for your calculated data. So same goes to period here. So period depends on T average. Since all my T average are in terms of three significant figures, therefore period is three significant figures. So T square, which is period square, depends on period. You take the value of the period, you just square it. So this is a raw data of the T square. So since T has three significant figures, therefore T square must be in terms of three significant figures as well. That's all. Tip number two, table tabulation. I'm gonna tell you this is one of very important part in your physics paper three, question number one. Why? Because table tabulation, you will gain 10 marks from your tabulation of table. What? Yes, it is true. And sometimes could be 11 marks, depending on the question. So first, whenever you have six sets of readings, because you are asked to repeat the experiment for six sets of reading in order for you to plot the graph, they will give you five marks for that. So you look at, this is my table. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six readings. So therefore, automatically, I will gain that five marks. And one mark will be given for range. So how do you determine the range? Look at the one that your raw data. So I am measuring the length. So I'm using meter roll to measure the length. So you know meter roll. The range of the meter rule, the range must include the smallest value and the largest value. So for meter rule, the smallest values are, so there are two smallest value. So either you use 10 cm or 20 cm. These, either one of these, or you, you might want to use two of this value, it doesn't matter, as long as you include either one of these or two values. 
So 10 or 20, I did put in my 20 cm, which is the smallest range. And the largest range is between okay, 20, uh, 90 cm and 100 cm. These two are called largest range. So either you put one of these two values or you put both values, it doesn't matter. So I do include the largest range. So automatically, I will gain that mon mark. That easy. And column headings, one mark. Column headings is actually the title of your table. So you need to put in your physical quantity together with the physical symbol slash the physical unit whenever appropriate. Like for this one, number of oscillations, I do not have unit for the number. There's no unit for number. So if there's no unit, don't force yourself to put in unit. That is one mark here. And consistency. Consistency, we refer to your decimal points of your raw data. So which are the raw data? Let me highlight your raw data. Length is your raw data. T1 and T2 are your raw data. So length, since you are using meter rule to measure your length, all the readings of the length must be recorded in terms of one decimal point. So this one are all in one decimal point. And what about T1 and T2? So remember, I put down my absolute uncertainty beside it, 0 0.1 second due to my human's reaction error. So I have to increase the uncertainty of my digital stopwatch. So all my readings must be recorded in terms of one decimal point as well. So these are all one decimal points. So therefore, I'll gain one mark for consistency. And the next one is significant figures. Significant figures are related to calculated data. So we are going to look at your T-average, your period, your period square. So T-average depends on T1 and T2. So since T1 and T2 are of three significant figures, therefore three uh, T-average must be in terms of three significant figures. That's correct. And what about a period? Period is calculated from the T-average divided by the number of oscillation, which is 20 in this case. So since the average has three significant figures, so all the T average have three significant figures. So therefore all your period must be in terms of three significant figures. And what about T square, period square? Period square depends on period. Since all the values of periods are in terms of three significant figures, therefore period square must be in three significant figures as well. That's all to gain that one mark. And then calculation. So all you need to do is just to make sure you press your calculator correctly to get the correct answer. One mark will be given for calculation. So in this case, the calculation is your T average, T and T square, period and period square to gain that one mark. And here, uh, let me give you one extra tip. What's that? So if the experiment is related to time taken, like the one that I showed you, the table that I showed you just now, all you need to do is to make sure your total time is more than 40 or equal to 40 seconds for the best accuracy of your experiment. So let us look at my table again. So what do I mean by total time? In this case, because I only repeated my time measurement twice, so therefore my total time will be T1 plus T2. I have to check whether my T1 plus T2 is more or equal to 40 seconds. So 21.4 plus 21 is definitely more than 40 seconds. 27 plus 26.7 is definitely more than 40 seconds. So all you need to do is just to add up, find the sum of these two T readings and make sure that all your total T, T1 and T2, T1 plus T2 must be more or equal to 40 seconds for better accuracy. What if your T1 is lesser, T1 and T2 or either one of the T is lesser than 40 seconds? All you need to do it's just increase the number of oscillation so that your time measurement could be increased as well. So that's the extra tip that you have to bear in mind. This is only related to time. Tip number three. 
It is about the graph and four marks will be given for your plotting of graph. So plotting of graph, I would like you to refer to one of the YouTube video that I've already made, which I will attach the link to the description. So in this video, I did discuss on how to plot the best fit line, how you determine that's your best fit line, how you know that your graph is of a good quality or the bad quality. And I do also give you super duper extra tips there. So please refer to this video. And tip number four, the last tip, make sure you show on the graph how your gradient is being calculated. You know that if on the graph, you're supposed to plot a best fit line. For example, this is your best fit line, right? So therefore, we would like to see which are the coordinates that you have taken to calculate your gradient. Because the triangle that you draw here must occupy at least half of the length of your best fit line. That's the reason why you have to show on the graph. You have to draw this triangle on the graph. And the final tip that I'm giving you is that since you are asked to calculate the gradient, you are asked to calculate the y-intercept, of course, they will give you one equation which you have to relate to the gradient and the y-intercept and make sure to give an appropriate units for the constant because y-intercept can be related to one constant and gradient might be related to the other constant. All you need to do is just to arrange your equation in terms of y equals mx plus c, straight line equation. So please give the appropriate units because most of the students, they forgot about the units. Unless the question did mention that no units are required, then you are safe. So that's all for the tips for paper three, AS paper three, question number one. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more exciting video, for more tips to be shared. And if you do have doubts in a certain parts of your AS topic, please do comment below. And do also stay tuned for the tips in answering paper three, question number two. So see you soon, bye.